Black holes are among the strangest objects in space. They are intangible, ravenous space phenomena. There are some that are unbelievably huge. Black holes can actually consume so much matter that they are able to expand almost indefinitely. What distinguishes black holes from our perceptions, then? How big can they get, and what is the largest one we have found so far? You must comprehend gravity in order to comprehend how black holes operate. A specific amount of force must be used in order to throw a ball at a specified height. Rockets work the same way. They just weigh a significant amount more than a ball. The speed at which a rocket must surpass Earth's gravitational pull is referred to as its escape velocity. A rocket must travel at least 11.2 kilometers per second, or around 6.9 miles per second, to escape the gravity of our planet. 1, 4, but what is a black hole's escape velocity? Either it is faster than light, or it is even faster. A black hole's event horizon, or the point beyond which escape is impossible, is reached once you've passed it, since nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. 1, however, how are black holes visible to us if they are opaque to visible light? Black holes are not empty spaces, despite their appearance, which suggests otherwise. It does not follow that there is nothing inside a black hole because we cannot see the black hole itself, just its effects on the matter around it. Its strong gravitational field is the cause of this. Everything is crammed into a black hole and is unable to escape. 11. An accretion disk is the spinning region that forms around a black hole as a result of matter and gas being drawn to it by its gravity. Additionally, because the many particles surrounding a black hole are moving so quickly, they heat up and begin to release gamma and X-rays. Therefore, we may actually detect those rays and infer the existence of a black hole using particular telescopes and satellites. Observing the anomalous motion of stars and interstellar material that may indicate the presence of a strong gravitational field nearby is another method to identify a black hole. 10, 11, any object has the potential to become a black hole, however, two essential components are required for this to occur, a large mass and a high density. It would only take 3 kilometers, 1.8 miles, of compression to turn our sun into a black hole, and less than 9 millimeters, 0.35 inches, of radius would be required to condense the mass of the Earth into a sphere the size of a little p. Do these small black holes actually exist, though? Large black holes with one atom and even smaller ones are theoretically possible. The fact that the smallest of them may have formed immediately after the Big Bang explains why they are commonly referred to as primordial or quantum black holes. However, because they would be far hotter than our sun, if these little black holes had existed, they would have been harmless and would have evaporated immediately after being created. Prehistoric black holes are thought by some scientists to be a component of dark matter. 6, 7, 8, 15, now, let's move on to the kind of black holes that we have been able to see and abandon the idea of primordial black holes. We can be certain that stellar black holes exist, and they are typically created by supernovae, which are explosions of enormous stars that flash brighter than the stars in an entire galaxy. Now, scientists use solar mass, our sun's mass is around 1.9 nonillion kilograms or 4.18 nonillion pounds, as a unit of measurement for the most enormous objects in space, including black holes. This method is similar to how we measure distance in space, which is the distance from Earth to the Sun additionally, a typical stellar black hole has a mass of 3 to 10 solar masses. 9, 13, 14, simply put, Cygnus X1 is the first star black hole that has been found. Our galaxy's Cygnus X1 star is situated about 7,000 light-years from Earth. However, what makes it interesting is that it spins around 800 times per second, which is almost at its maximum rate. Cygnus X1 is a relatively modest black hole representative, even with its 21 solar masses. The name of the next class of black holes is self-explanatory, intermediate mass black holes. Intermediate mass black holes were long thought to be a gap in our knowledge of black hole evolution. However, things could change very soon. Given that its mass can range from hundreds to thousands of times that of the Sun, this kind of black hole is already far larger than the average one. Strong X-rays were discovered by astronomers in 2006, and as you are already aware, this is one method of finding black holes that are hidden from human view. A dense star cluster in a different galaxy was located by tracking these X-rays. Additionally, a black hole's mass is estimated to be around 50,000 solar masses based on the brightness of the signal that was received. Many indications point to an intermediate mass black hole, even if scientists are still unsure of this for sure. 
Although 50,000 solar masses might seem like a lot, supermassive black holes are much smaller than that. Like most galaxies, one of those is located directly in the center of the Milky Way. Despite just being 17 times larger than the Sun, Sagittarius A asterisk possesses an astounding 4.6 million times more mass than the Sun. Actually, it's not that large, in fact, it might fit inside Mercury's orbit. We are still roughly 26,000 light years away from Sagittarius A asterisk, thus neither our planet nor our solar system are in danger. Meanwhile, some faraway galaxies have supermassive black holes that behave strangely. This unusually brilliant quasar, known as 3C186, was discovered and photographed by NASA's Hubble telescope. It is located in a galaxy that is 8 billion light years from Earth. We already know that supermassive black holes are found in the centers of the majority of galaxies. However, scientists have discovered that this black hole is not exactly at the center. It is really farther from the center of its galaxy than our Sun is, roughly 35,000 light years, than it is from the Milky Way's center. 32. Given that a black hole weighs more than a billion suns, what could possibly move it? It is estimated by scientists that two galaxies collided between one and two billion years ago. Strong gravitational waves were produced as the two galaxies' center black holes began to circle one another as they clashed and eventually combined to form one. Consequently, a recently formed black hole was forcefully expelled in the opposite direction of the strongest gravitational waves. Such a kick has so much strength that it was likened to 100 million supernovae erupting simultaneously. 3C186 continues to retreat at a pace of 4 7 million miles per hour, 7 5 million kilometers per hour. It could take it 3 minutes to get from our planet to the moon at this pace. We currently don't know how enormous the newly formed black hole could be, but it should be substantially larger than a billion suns. Don't misunderstand. Black holes are not cosmic vacuum cleaners, in order to grow so large, they must consume a massive amount of stars. The Earth's orbit would remain unchanged if a black hole with the same mass were to abruptly replace our Sun. Furthermore, since its radius would only be 3 kilometers, 1.8 miles, we wouldn't be engulfed by it. Thus, we would need to be considerably closer to it than we are at the moment. Even though supermassive black holes are enormous in comparison to ultramassive black holes, they are still difficult to understand. Sagittarius A asterisk, one of the biggest and most enormous black holes ever found in this category, would appear to be a little asteroid next to our Sun. There is a black hole 40 billion times larger than the Sun located in the giant galaxy home 15A, which is home to about 2 trillion solar masses. In contrast, that represents over half of all the stars in our galaxy combined. 700 million light years separate us and home 15A. And the size of our entire solar system is matched by a black hole at the center of this galaxy. 22. Up until recently, experts thought that the mass of a bright black hole could not exceed 50 billion solar masses. They had no idea that a recent finding might alter this. 24. The brightest things in the universe are quasars, not stars or galaxies, as you may not be aware. Not very long ago, TON618, a quasar with 140 trillion times the brightness of the Sun, was found. Its brightness surpasses that of the entire galaxy in which it resides. Furthermore, with 66 billion solar masses, the ultramassive black hole driving it is a true monster, more massive than all of the Milky Way stars put together. The diameter of TON618 is 389.8 billion kilometers, or 242.2 billion miles. The quasar is situated 10.4 billion light-years away from Earth in the Canes Venatici constellation. It takes more than 10 billion years for the light from TON618 to reach us because of its great distance. Therefore, the size of the universe was only seen a few billion years ago. Additionally, it might have expanded significantly by now. One theory is that in order for such a massive black hole to form, there ought to have been an earlier black hole that merged with the larger one to act as a seed for it to expand. However, computer simulations demonstrate that TON618 did not occur in this manner. A scenario where several black holes gradually merge into one is more likely. Although we are unsure if it explains the formation of TON618, it is still the largest black hole that has been found so far. Thus far, our findings consistently reveal new black holes that seem to be getting bigger and bigger. Furthermore, some scientists have even begun to hypothesize the possibility of a brand new class of black holes called stupendously massive black holes. These black holes may be mass-rich, potentially exceeding 100 billion solar masses. All of this raises the question, are black holes everlasting if they are always growing? 
30 indeed in terms of human life the age of our sun our planet and even our solar system the answer is definitely yes hawking radiation is the process by which black holes gradually evaporate and lose a small amount of mass the problem is that the procedure moves quite slowly a black hole with a mass of 100 million tons will take approximately the lifetime of our universe to lose barely half of its mass furthermore this process slows down more the larger they are Black holes will remain for a very long time after all the stars have faded or exploded. By the way, please let us know in the comments if you'd like to see a video on this or how the universe will gradually freeze and die. The radius of the observable universe is approximately 46 billion light years. Thus, there are still plenty of surprises in store for us. Hopefully, we'll discover something eventually that will help explain the enigmatic, dark areas that are dispersed throughout the skies. Thus far, it's like attempting to estimate the contents of a room based solely on its potential dimensions and temperature. We thank you for viewing, and we hope you enjoyed this video.